Let's bring in our panel now while we work on that. I want to bring in Sam Harris, the author of Islam and the Future of Tolerance, and also Dino Badala, columnist for The Daily Beast. Thank you guys for jumping in a little bit early here. Uh, if, if, if we uh, get Armstrong Williams back, we'll bring him in as well. So, um, Dean, uh, Armstrong Williams, Dr. Carson's friend and mm -hmm. business manager, doubling down on Dr. Carson's Muslim comments. What is your reaction to that? I think on some level, Armstrong Williams just denounced Ben Carson's comments on some level by saying, of course you could have a Muslim candidate. What Ben Carson said, though, is part of the meme we've heard from the right over and over, that being Muslim somehow makes you less American and you have less rights. That somehow, since I'm a Muslim, I'm a threat to this country. I'm an enemy to this country. I want to oppose Islamic law and take over the country. You know, these are things we hear over and over. And we, we're doing our best to fight against these ideas, to make it clear to our fellow Americans that I don't want to impose Islamic law. My Muslim friends don't want to impose Islamic law. Yet somehow we keep hearing this over and over. And mm -hmm. it's a fight. You know, it's a fight. I'm, I'm trying to reach out to my fellow Americans and win the hearts and minds. And it's a struggle. Yeah. So, Sam, do you, do you view Dr. Carson's comments as bigoted at all? Well, I do. I think we have to distinguish it between how we treat ideas and how we treat people. And what you hear in Dr. Carson's remarks is a kind of Christian demagoguery coming into the conversation. He's not... He's a, frankly, he's not a very thoughtful person. I mean, here's a, a surgeon who doesn't believe in evolution. I mean, if ever you needed proof that you, you could be a surgeon without being a scientist, you have it in the person of Dr. Carson. So he's, I don't expect him to have thought deeply about how Islam may be, uh, as, a, as a set of doctrines and ideas, may be incompatible with the Constitution or any other set of ideas. But he is a, a Bible thumper of sorts who I think rightly fears the, the demagoguery of of uh, his antithesis in the Muslim world, but that doesn't mean, I mean, so, so for instance, I am a very vocal critic of Islam as a set of doctrines and ideas, and Dean, your, your other guest, has called me a bigot in the past, I think quite unfairly. I think unfairly. on Twitter, not I, I, in your face, well, well, but I will well, tonight if you well, like can, that. Well, okay, no so, that, that. Well, that's, it's even more courageous to do it on Twitter, but I let me just no spell out, lest, right lest he, let lest he seem to obfuscate the, the, the issue here, is that I think there are, are thousands, no doubt thousands of Muslim Americans who could be great presidents and, and far better presidents than Ben Carson or Donald Trump. That is not, and, and, and there's nothing about criticizing Islam as a set of ideas or worrying about Sharia law that denies that fact. And, and what's very unhelpful here is in all the other cases where people like Dean and other Muslim apologists find bigotry and racism or pretend to find it where it doesn't exist. And, before and I let Dean, there's, there's before, like, D, before you respond, I want to ask Sam this. Do, Sam, do you think that Islam is inconsistent with the U.S. Constitution as someone who studies this? Well, it, it, it depends what you mean by Islam. Islam is a, is a vast set of uh, commitments and ideas. And, and you know, there are 1.6 billion Muslims on earth who hold to those ideas in varying degrees. Some nominally and some are, you know, right next door to or even right of, you know, Mullah Omar. The, 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 the crucial case of extremism now is ISIS or the Islamic State. Now, if you're gonna talk about Sharia law, if you're gonna talk about the law that mandates the cutting off of hands of thieves or throwing gays from rooftops. Is that in the Quran, the Sam? Sam, is that in the Quran, or, or throwing the, or the, gays from rooftops? I just said, is that in the Quran? It's not in the Hadith. It's not in the Quran. You know, you know it's not in the Quran, it is, Sam. It and not all Muslims follow Hadith. And you know that. You know and it's, it. See, I've had Dean, a gay Imam, this kind of obscure, openly gay Imam. Dean, let him finish your thought, Sam, finish your thought, and then Dean, you can respond. Dean, you're going to get a chance to talk. Excellent. But it's this kind of obscurantism that you hear piping up from Dean now, which, which gives some kernel of truth to the fears expressed by people like, again, genuine bigots like uh, Ben Carson, or even worse, like the person who stood up at Trump's rally, who was obviously a lunatic, obviously okay. a bigot, should have been shouted down by Trump. But what, what's very sinister here is when you have seemingly liberal Muslims play hide the ball with the article of faith and deny at every turn that there's any link between ideas to and the kinds of violence right. we see in the Muslim world. Go ahead, Dean. Getting advice I, from Sam about Islam is like getting advice from Paula Dean about Black Lives Matter. You have to be there, kidding me, There you me, go. He's, he's calling me a bigot Sam, on national television. I didn't television, call you a bigot. I have not. absolutely not a bigot. I, I, ahead, okay, and, and I will say this, Sam. I agree with you and I applaud that you say that what Ben Carson says was bigotry and what was said at the Trump event was bigotry, and that's great. And, I, and we do agree on that. So maybe we can find common ground in certain places. Dean, that's where we can. I just released a book with a, a Muslim co-author, a person who has paid his dues right. uh, of, against bigotry what? far more than you have, what I would imagine. He spent four years in an Egyptian... Okay, gentlemen. And yet you are responding...
seem to me Sam, like we're a living in the United States. Uh, Sam, I, we live in the United States of America. I am concerned about the spike in hate crimes versus Muslims. I'm concerned that three Muslim okay, students let's talk about that spike. North I'm Carolina. concerned too. Okay, I, we, stand so by, gentlemen, gentlemen, about stand by. We'll get to the spike and and, and your concern, but yeah. I, uh, you guys will come back. Hold on, Steen Obidala. Okay, gentlemen, let's pick up our conversation. Uh, first up, I want to I want to read this poll. This is a recent Gallup poll. Thirty eight percent of Americans, it says. Uh, that say that they would not support a Muslim candidate for president. So Dr. Ben Carson is not alone. So why do you think that is? First, you, Dean. I think, honestly, there's a lot of components. One is only about 25% of Americans have a Muslim friend. And if you don't have one, I offer to be your Muslim friend. But in reality, that plays a role. Because if all you see are negative images on the media of ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, these horrible groups committing horrible acts in the name of Islam, coupled by some of the people on the right ginning up the fear, you're not going to feel warmly about Muslims. If I didn't know a Muslim, if I wasn't Muslim, and all I saw was that, I would not like Muslims either. And I think that's part of the problem. We have to get out there as much as possible. Armstrong Williams said, we don't denounce terrorism. We do left and right. We need to get in the media more, mm -hmm. and that's up to the gatekeepers to let us on, because I can assure you, Don, I write articles for CNN and Daily Beast denouncing, and so do numerous other Muslims, and we beg to come on TV. But what gets ratings on TV is sensationalism, not earnest Muslims saying terrorism is horrible, it doesn't represent our faith. Sam? That's part of it. Sam? Yeah, well, I think one thing to point out is that Ben Carson would have said the same thing about atheists. He would have said an atheist shouldn't be president. And in fact, if you look at the polls, Americans are more reluctant to vote for an atheist than for a Muslim by, by a factor of, of uh, probably 20 percent. In fact, atheism is the only identity that couldn't get you, that would prevent your election as a qualified member of your own party when, when, when people of your own party are polled. So, you know, we can play this victim card. We can worry about political bigotry. It's a real problem, but it is visited upon atheists, it's visited upon other uh, minorities. And uh, what, what gets lost here and what Dean, frankly, is, has really been a, a scandalous purveyor of. Scandalous purveyor? The, the, e the effort. Well, yeah. let, me, let me finish Please, my sentence, I'm excited. Dean. Well, let me I'll tell you what the problem is and then you can defend yourself. Please, thank you. you. What you, what you see here is an effort to paint Islam, the doctrine, as identical to every other religion on earth. There's no special problem with Islam as a, as a political reality, Islamism, jihadism. There's no connection between the doctrine and the kind of terrorism and human rights abuses we see worldwide. And that is a lie. And it's a lie, and, and everyone knows it, whether you're a bigot or a reasonable person. It is a lie that is in plain view, and it has to be debunked by Muslims like Dean. And that's the crucial problem here. You, people like Dean need to be candid about the link between belief and behavior, and they need to be willing to reform the faith. And what instead of being willing to do that, they call people like me bigots. And that is a, is a huge problem for this conversation. It's decidedly unhelpful, and it's, 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 it's driving the, the, it's driving the poles apart. And I think we're going to wake up in a world that looks more like Western Europe at this point, where you have so Dean, fascists right. calling, calling the shots on both sides. So my I, question is, Dean, I, I have heard, even, I've heard people in, in the Muslim faith say the same thing, that there is a, and you and I have spoken about sure. this. We spoke about it on your radio show this sure, weekend, yeah. that there are people who are in the Muslim faith who, mm -hmm. um, who have said this base, all, basically the same thing that Sam is saying, mm -hmm. but yet and still don't get called bigoted or are somehow um, listened to, but he is not. The messenger matters, Don. That's the truth. We know that. Sam knows that. It, Sam it is doesn't called, matter. My co-author on this book you, was I'm called sorry. a talking finish, monkey you, by you your just friend. So don't interrupt you. <clears throat> now you interrupt me. Sam, you've, you've called for religious and racial profiling of Muslims. A third of Muslims in a country. I have in this not. Country, You've you've wrote it in your blog. I can read it out loud if you I, want. I, I, well, if you made an effort to understand my views, you I, would have a different story. I can talk. We can talk about profiling, but you have you, not summarized my views accurately. Let's continue on though and talk in, in the political have, realm. Well, um, the, the Dean, reality, go ahead and answer my question, please. Well, the question is, the, ISIS and Al Qaeda are killing Muslims more than anybody. Do you not think we yes. want ISIS and Al Qaeda to be stopped? We very much want that to be done. We are having discussions internally in our community. We want to do more. I don't know how I'm going to reach someone in Pakistan, frankly, or Afghanistan. So how do we fix this? This issue in the U.S. where you have a presidential candidate saying that a Muslim should not be president. You have 38 percent of the population 
saying the same thing. So I think it ta I think it takes time. The same okay. way anti-Semitism in America in the nineteen thirties and forties was mainstream. The same way racism against African Americans was mainstream. Right. The same way anti-Catholicism in the nineteen sixty. John Kennedy mm -hmm. gave a famous speech and maybe it takes some of us and I have no problem giving that speech that John Kennedy addressed it head yeah. on. That it's he not just an absolute absolute war between church and state. It's not just so incumbent uh, upon uh, Muslims to do it. We all have to do it. I appreciate both of you gentlemen. Thank you Thanks. so much for, for joining yeah. me this evening. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Well, Carson's remarks, a calculated political move. Up next, our